What is going on guys? So today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to actually overclock your GPU the correct way. Uh, a lot of the computers that we've shipped out this past year, we've actually had a few clients that have tried overclocking themselves uh, and have damaged their hardware. Uh, and this is, I, I always get this question too, is do you recommend overclocking? I, I don't recommend overclocking because I'm not sure what kind of cooling you have. Uh, and I always say, I always say no. Uh, obviously, if I built it for you, I will kind of give you a more uh, direct answer because I know what kind of hardware you have. But at the same time, I still say no because it does void your warranty. Uh, so that's why I don't recommend it. Uh, also, you do get a boost in performance, but it's not by like a crazy amount. Uh, you do get a boost depending, again, on your cooling. If you have a full-blown liquid cooling machine, that's where you probably notice the, well, that's where you will notice the biggest benefit uh, from overclocking. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up MSI Afterburner. Uh, so what you do is you just download MSI Afterburner. It's really easy. You just Google it. MSI Afterburner comes right up. Um, and then if this is pretty much for RTX cards, NVIDIA RTX cards, you can do this with AMD cards as well, but the overclocking is a little bit different. Um, not by much. It's not, not a huge, massive difference. But with NVIDIA cards, pretty much what you want to do is the power limit and the temp limit are going to be locked together. You just want to put that all the way up. Since these cards, their core clock and memory clock is all based off of uh, pretty much their temperature readout. So of course, the cooler the GPU is, the higher the core clocks will start boosting themselves. Uh, and then once it gets to the threshold, it starts declocking itself at that point. So by us increasing the temperature limit and the power limit, instead of it uh, being at 80 Celsius, so once it gets to 80 Celsius, it starts reducing its core clock, uh, we're gonna increase that to 88 Celsius, right? Now, if you have a GPU that is not liquid cooled, your fan speed, what I'd recommend doing is, is putting uh, pretty much like a fan curve, which I'm gonna show you how to do that actually as well. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna click on settings here. You wanna go to fan speed, or just fan in general. You wanna enable user, uh, define software automatic control. So the way I like to do it when I do overclocks, I like to put it at increments of 10. So pretty much we'll do 10 to 10. We'll do, oops, there you go, 20 to 20, 30 to 30, 40 to 40. Let's put that there. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by this, what I mean by 30 to 30 and 20 to 20 and all that jazz. If it wants to stay, okay, or not, we'll just do this. We'll drag that one there. And then we'll drag that there. And then we'll put this, yeah, like that, that's good. Okay, so as you can see on the left-hand side, you're gonna have your fan speed, which is on the left-hand side, and then you're gonna have your temperature. Now this fan curve, this is something I've used for a long time, and, and I've always done it this one. I've always noticed it actually worked out really well. So. At, at uh, 10 Celsius, it's going to go to 10 fan speed, so on and so forth. It's going to be idling most likely get around the 30 to 40 range. So your fan speed is going to automatically be at 40%. Your fan speed will be at 50% when it's at 50 Celsius, 60% when it's at 60 Celsius, 70% when it's at 70 Celsius, 80% when it's at 80 Celsius. Um, and I pretty much go all the way through up to, up to 90 as well. So uh, that's your fan curve. So now we have that set up. We hit OK. Uh, I only do that when it's needed when it comes to uh, overclocking. You can actually do that same profile if you're not overclocking. Uh, but your GPU will be a little bit louder than normal, but your temperatures will be uh, lower, and that will actually help out with your GPU getting the correct core clock. All right, so now that we have that set up, now that we have the power limit and the temperature limit set up as well, now what we're going to do is we're going to mess with the core clock and the memory clock. So pretty much on the core clock, what we're going to do is we're going to actually increment. Uh, you can do increments of 20. If you want, uh, I always recommend to start small. Memory clock can go a little higher. You can do 100 with no problem, uh, depending on your card, but you can easily do 100. Uh, once you do that, you're gonna hit the little check mark. You're gonna hit apply. And then once you apply it, what you wanna do is you could either run, so they have a thing called Furmark, which we would run as Furmark, or you could even run uh, a thing called 3 to Mark Vantage or Unigen Heaven. Unigen Heaven is one that I've used for quite a bit. It puts your GPU at 100%, but Furmark is the, is the more stress one. It's kind of like Prime 95 for CPUs. Uh, you just got to be careful, but honestly, with overclocking, it's trial and error. Uh, a lot of times it might be stable in one software, and then when you play a game or another game or whatever, it might crash on a certain game. So you got to keep testing it out. It's one of those things where this build that, I've, that we've built, this is the Liquid Cool Limited Edition build, I've been overclocking for the past week because I've been dialing in like the perfect settings uh, for overclocking and for uh, CPU overclocking as well and the RAM and all that jazz. So I've been dialing it back and forth and testing out different games, you know, from Sea of Thieves to Fortnite to Destiny to, to uh, Red Dead Redemption to th synthetic benchmarks. So I've been doing a lot of testing because I want to make sure this thing is running at the best settings possible. Uh, so pretty much once you run those few tests, uh, you could run, let's say, 3D Mark Engine and have in one lap. Okay, we're good. So let's go to increase that back up again. We can go to, let's go to 40 now, right? 
So then you go to 40, you increase this another 100 with memory clock, hit apply, do the same thing, you know, run some benchmarks, run some games uh, for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, if it doesn't crash, then you're good and you can keep increasing it. And again, it's one of those things where if the, let's say Windows freezes on you and it locks up, that means you've gone too far. Or if the GPU starts artifacting, you've gone too far. So you need to back out. Uh, what, what I'm going to show you my overclock with the, with the GPU I have in this build since it's a... It's a high-end 180 Ti. It's a Lightning Z. Uh, as you can see here at the bottom, it says LN2. So the BIOS we're using is the LN2 BIOS. It's one that I flashed on GPU, which is another thing too, is if you really want to get into overclocking, a lot of your GPUs will have uh, actually a BIOS for overclocking as well. Some do, not all of them. Uh, if you have like a 26 or you know, something in the mid-range area, they're not really going to do that. It's more for the enthusiast higher level of the 2080 Ti's and 2080 Supers and so on. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but they might have a BIOS for it. You don't really don't have to do that. It's just one of those things where, but the 2080 Ti Lightning Z, I went ahead and did that because they did have a, a specific BIOS for it, especially when it's water cooled. So once, let's say you dial in all your settings, right? Your settings are dialed in, you got everything good to go. Uh, now what you can do is you can actually see this little save button right here. So you click this and then you can click, you can save up to five profiles. So I'm just gonna put this on number five. So now when I start my PC up, you can actually set it up too to start up when your PC starts up, it's a setting. Uh, so that way, right here, the little button where it has a little window thing, it says start up. So now every time my PC starts up, it's gonna start up with this overclock automatically. I don't like doing that, so I, I leave that off, but you can do it if you want to. So I'm gonna show you my overclock and then you guys are gonna be like, wait, what in the world, what would you do? Uh, this is a lot of tweaking, so it's not, so when I hit one, these are my overclock. So I got plus 200 on the core and I did plus 1300 on the memory clock. Keep in mind, this is a high-end GPU. This is not one of those, 20, it's not a reference design 2080, 2080 Ti. It's got a custom PCB where it has three eight pins. So the, the power draw is a lot higher as well than your standard 2080 Ti. So I can push this thing a lot more than your average 2080 Ti. Uh, so pretty much from benchmarking itself, me going back and forth, which actually I can show you uh, kind of give you an idea of kind of the results I got. Uh, let's see here. So let's bring up this one and let's bring up this one. So these two, this is for me running huge in heaven. Let's go here and here. And I don't know why it's so zoomed in. Jeez. All right. Anyways, we'll leave it like that. That's fine. Uh, so the one on the left is, this is actually me overclocking the GPU to, uh, this was to 2050 on the core and plus 1,000 on the memory. Uh, Unigen Heaven has scored 197 and plus this is the CPU at 3.8 gigahertz as well, the base, so it wasn't overclocked at all. Uh, the one to the right, I overclocked the GPU uh, to 2130 on the core and the memory clock was plus 1300, so I brought it up to 201. A stock run with this build averaged 186. So we went from 186 FPS to 201. Also, the minimum went up as well, as you can see, 48 compared to 45. The stock run, uh, the minimum was around 30, it was like 39-ish around there. So, so performance-wise, yes, it did go up. Again, I, I'm not gonna run it at those settings with this PC. It's just more of a, I wanna see how far I can push it. If I were to run this PC 24-7 with an overclock, I'd probably push this down to, I'd probably leave it like around 100, plus 100, and I'll probably leave this like at 1,000 on the memory. Uh, which it's stable the way I had it, but I, I like to run things a little bit more safe. Uh, that way it doesn't deteriorate the hardware over time, uh, so on and so forth. But the, currently I'm not running any, any, any overclock on the PC on the actual, on the GPU. The CPU on the other hand, that's different. I am, I am running uh, the actual CPU uh, at 4.4 uh, because again, I'm still kind of stress testing it for the past three or four days and so far we have, we've had no crashes. So. As you can see, we have the Ryzen 3900X at 1.3. It's actually 1.32, but it ups it a little bit in the, in the windows, 1.33 at 4.4 gigahertz. So the Ryzen 3900X, if you could actually get one to pass 4.2 at 1.25 volts, you have top 6% in the world. If you can get 4.4 uh, gigahertz at 1.32, you're up there. You're in the top top five, top 4%. Uh, so we got very lucky with this, PC, with this CPU uh, in this uh, limited edition build. So this thing's pumping out some good numbers. Uh, and as far as the GPU, same thing, it's it's bringing a lot of good numbers. So if someone were to get this machine, they could easily overclock it to those settings. We'll have the, pre, the profile here for them uh, and they can actually game on that profile with no problem. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or concerns over uh, these results, uh, over anything like that, please post you know comments at the bottom or join the Discord. The Discord, we're always, we're always pretty active in there and we're always answering questions. 
Uh, and I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, wait, power, but I thought you don't like overclocking. No, I love overclocking. That's where I came from. I used to do overclocking back in 2003, 2006, and I used to do like competitions for overclocking on 3D Mark Vantage and 3D Mark 06 and 3D Mark 03 and all that jazz. So um, I come from the background of overclocking. I love it. But when it comes to actual gaming, I, I don't really... I don't really see it as a much needed thing. Uh, just depends on your hardware. I mean, yeah, it's free performance, of course, uh, but then you run the risk of damaging your hardware and you got to make sure you know what you're doing and you got to make sure you have the right temperatures and cooling and so on and so forth. So uh, just look into it a little bit more before you just jump right into it or if someone says, hey, I know, I know a lot about overclocking and they take over your computer and they start doing messing with software. Uh, it's, it's very scary. It's a very scary thing and, and, and they can actually damage a lot of stuff, especially if you just finished buying a three to four thousand dollar machine and then they you know fry your gpu or fry your cpu or something you know these these cpus and gpus do have a safety mechanism where they shut off uh for you but a lot of times you never know it might not it might not kick in it might not work so that's pretty much it guys i hope you guys have a fantastic uh wednesday i gotta get back to work here uh and if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to like subscribe and uh we'll be uh posting a lot more of these and you guys have a good night peace pal or gpu Power GPU. <laughs>